Tonight's big story, a new study of Greenland's melting ice cap has concluded it's already too late to prevent sea levels rising by 27 centimetres. It found 110 trillion tonnes of ice melt is now inevitable and called 27 centimetres a conservative estimate that could easily double. Melt season is underway on the world's biggest island and busloads of tourists are here to witness it. You see this glacier and you see that it's falling apart literally in front of you. Then of course you get a lot of thoughts about uh, are my children still going to be able to see that. There is a very much a sense of urgency that we have to see this now before it disappears. A new study published in the journal Nature says glaciers like this are disappearing faster than expected. It found Greenland's melt alone will raise its sea levels by 27 centimetres. And if global carbon emissions continue unchanged, a multimetre rise appears likely. The study used satellite measurements of ice losses in the shape of the ice cap between 2000 and 2019. Amid retreating glaciers, Greenland is seeing tourism grow. We experiencing it uh, uh, so close. We can see the ice cap uh, going backwards. But for locals, Greenland's changing climate isn't just a summer getaway, it's a reality. It used to be st stable, the same temperature, very cold in the winter. It's not that way anymore. I think it's very quick because uh, I have seen that huge amount of ice cap disappearing. Just in the 34 years I have been in here, if you have seen it change that fast, then I'm not looking forward to the next 30 years. The scientists say we must look forward and not look away. For more on this, we are joined by Greenpeace campaigner Christine Rose. Hi there, Christine. Thanks very much for coming in and talking to us. What did you make of these predictions? It's a stark warning about the impacts of climate change that we are in the midst of. So climate change is very clearly here and now in a current catastrophe. It seems to be arriving a bit sooner than we anticipated. Yeah, and it's evidence that these feedback mechanisms, these loops where um, climate change is feeding off each other and the warnings about increased volatility more frequently seem to be coming to pass already and unfortunately affecting every corner of the globe. So we say some of the impacts are here already, but some of these sea level rises that are predicted, are we talking about decades or centuries for these to actually occur? I think it's both. Um, the fact that we are seeing evidence around the world of climate change in all its manifestations, whether it's droughts, floods, fires, um, deluges and melting glaciers and ice caps, there's no part of the world that won't be untouched and unfortunately including parts of the world who have done least to cause climate change. So that means that there's a clear responsibility for those of us in developed nations who are creating more than our fair share of climate and greenhouse gas emissions to make sure that we mitigate and avoid as much of the damage that we're imposing upon both people elsewhere but also um, the, the living world. So we need to do what we can to address that now. So this report says the sea level rise is happening regardless of what we do now, this 27 centimetres. Are you worried that people will just throw up their hands and give up? It is a risk, and I think that we've had decades of not doing what we need to do, and so we're calling on the government to end the greenwashing and to make sure that their climate action actually delivers on addressing the greenhouse gas emissions here in New Zealand that are contributing to global green, um, climate change. And so in New Zealand, importantly, that's addressing 50% of our emissions come from intensive agriculture, in particular intensive dairying, and, and there are no mechanisms at the moment that are addressing that major cause of climate change. So we need to tackle that here in New Zealand while keeping an eye on what the rest of the world's doing too. What, in terms of the rest of the world, farmers would say that we do a better job of it here than other parts of the world. So it's better that we do the farming even though it's adding to our emissions. What would you say to that? We, um, we produce more emissions per capita than most countries and um, we're about middle of the rank in terms of the carbon efficiency of our agriculture but given that it creates 50% of our emissions we haven't got a moment to lose and we really need to tackle it. At the moment intensive dairying is not included in the emissions trading scheme even though it's such a major polluter so we really 
really need to get on top of those things to retain the credibility or to regain credibility that we're taking climate change seriously. OK, it's a dire warning, but is there any cause for optimism, do you think, that when we see a report like this, it might act as a call to action and actually galvanise people around the idea of combating climate change? Yeah, we definitely need to minimise climate change, mitigate and adapt, and um, there's not a moment to lose. And these are really stark warnings that governments need to act. And I think that that's why it's incumbent, our government needs to listen to the warnings and, um, and respond in a whole of society approach. But it does need to start with those intense emitters like intensive dairying. OK, Christine, thanks very much for your time tonight.